Hello everybody and welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Savannah and today I am going to be answering some assumptions that you guys have about me. I asked you guys to send me some assumptions on my phone on Instagram and if you are not following me on Instagram, what are you doing? Please go follow me. I would greatly appreciate it and I also um, put some kind of like polls and whatnot on my stories if you guys are interested in kind of having a voice in what kind of content that I make or what kind of video you guys see this week, uh, please go follow because I do like to do those things from time to time. So yeah, today I'm just going to be answering some assumptions that you guys have about me. I've looked at some of them, but we're just going to kind of take a peek and see what you guys think. Oh, also, if you guys are new here, then you probably don't know this, but I straighten my hair and I normally don't straighten my hair very often, but I'm loving it. It is super, super long, but it's kind of driving me nuts because I need to wash it today and I really don't want to. So I'm getting like one other day out of it and filming a video with my hair straight to prove that I straighten my hair. I don't know. But anyways, let's just go ahead and get into some of the assumptions. So I do have a few right here I'm trying to figure out which one I should do first. The first one that I'm gonna do is, it honestly cracks me up because I feel like everybody feels this way, but it says that you are the most put together person that I know. And I feel like if anybody says that about you, you can't help but like laugh because it's like, I don't know, like nobody really thinks that they're very together, I feel like. Most people feel like, oh my gosh, I'm like doing, all this kind of stuff and you feel like you don't have your life together most of the time even if you maybe do to other people but it's like mentally it's like oh my gosh I'm just exhausted and I have a lot on my plate and you just kind of feel I don't feel like inadequate but you just kind of feel like you could always improve and most people don't feel like they have their lives together I don't feel like I have my life completely put together by any means but I feel like I do have like a good routine like in the mornings like I don't wake up like 10 minutes before I have to go to class like I try to sit down have a chill morning like drink my coffee I always try to eat breakfast and I try to stay on top of my schedule as best as I can because procrastinating does not work for me I've tried it many a times it's just not for me it's for you that's okay but I don't know I just feel like I try to kind of keep a hold of my life as best as I can or try to just control everything because I am a control freak and this is not therapy this is a, an assumptions about me but I'm just kind of rambling but um I think that that was very sweet though like saying that they feel like I'm very put together I try to be as best as I can but everybody feels like they're not so but yeah that is I guess the answer to my assumption if that made any sense I just rambled a whole lot just then someone else said you're more on the quiet side girl if I, the only time that I'm ever quiet is if I am like uncomfortable in a situation or if I'm like in a newer environment that I don't feel very comfortable in, I will be so quiet. Or like if I'm really pissed off, I will get quiet. Or if I'm editing, I'm really quiet. But other than that, I am a very talkative person. I'm very, very social. That's just kind of like how I always have been. My dad is very vocal and very social and I definitely get that from him. So I love like meeting new people though. I don't consider myself very quiet. Don't get me wrong. I know when to be quiet. Like obviously like in class and everything like that. But I just like to talk to people. I feel like that there's a lot of really cool things to learn about every person that you come across. And like there's always little lessons kind of everywhere around you and if you take the time to listen to somebody and like sit there and talk to them you can like help them solve a problem you can like help them like make them feel better just by talking to them um so yeah I, i'm definitely not very quiet at all but there are times where it's very important to be quiet and just kind of have like a more relaxed time if that makes any sense like there is nothing i love more than just like chilling out like on my couch or my bed and just like being quiet and like watching YouTube videos or journaling or like doodling or something like that. I live for that but then I also really love being social as well. So there's a yes also but it's mainly no for the quiet side. The next one is you have a small circle of friends. I would, th this is hard because there's multiple answers to all these questions but I feel like 
yes and no I do have a very small like not a very small I have like a small group of really 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 like best friends Yeah, so there's five of us. No, there's six of us counting me, if that makes any sense. And then, but I feel like I have like a fair amount of friends that I just know and like I talk to, but I'm not like the closest with them because I really like making new friends and um, like learning about new people and all this kind of stuff. So I would say I do have a fair amount of like friends that I see all the time or that I see like in class and whatnot but I don't hang out with them a ton but then like my actual like group of besties it's not very big and we all kind of work really well together but we all do kind of have to have our times where we are like not always like up each other's butts so yeah there's like a balance to everything I guess but I, I would say yes and no like I, I have a lot of friends in a sense but then as far as like the ones that I see regularly and that I look most forward to seeing it would definitely be a smaller group. This one it says that you are a beautiful wholesome person who loves herself a whole lot. That is really really sweet. Um, I feel like I I do love myself a whole lot. That sounds like such like a narcissistic thing. But if you don't love yourself, then like what are you doing, sis? Like how are you in a relationship? How are you doing like anything that is for somebody else and loving it, like putting love into it? I feel like you can put love into something and you not love yourself, but it's never as good as like if you do something and you love yourself and you can even protrude that love even more towards others so I do definitely love myself there are aspects of myself that I don't love um, but I mean that's just how we as humans are that's just kind of how we are um, so I don't know I feel like I don't know if I'm wholesome I guess I don't know this this is like kind of like a narcissistic question if I answer it, I don't know. I feel like I'm pretty, yes. I'm, am I drop dead gorgeous? I don't think so. Um, I feel like I love myself, definitely. I try to spread my love towards others and all that kind of stuff. I feel like it's very important for everybody to feel like that they should love themselves because it is a very, very lonely thing to not love yourself and to feel like you don't deserve love. That is a very, very scary and dark place to be in. And I don't feel like anybody deserves to feel that or go through that because that is a, that's a really, really dangerous road to get down to feel like you don't deserve love. And if you feel that very regularly, that's it's not healthy to feel that way. And it's definitely smart to get help if you can. But kind of like faking it before you make it kind of thing. Like, like say you look really pretty in the mirror and maybe you don't feel the most beautiful. But you're like, oh my gosh, I love my hair today. Da -da -da. Like you just try to give yourself the most compliments possible like in your head and just try to like fake that confidence if you don't have any and slowly but surely it will come and you will start to feel significantly better about yourself because it's really hard not having a good confidence and then trying to build that up but it is the biggest investment that you can make in yourself and I feel very very passionately about this clearly because everybody deserves to feel beautiful like everybody deserves to feel good about themselves and they should love themselves despite all their wrongdoings and like the things that they regret and their mistakes and the aspects they don't like about themselves but none of that matters. That was a very long-winded answer and I'm sorry I just got really really passionate about that one um but yeah that is how I feel. I, I guess I can say yes to that one after I've said all of that so yes. The next one says that you're smart. I wouldn't say like I am the smartest like book smart by any means. I am not really good at science or anything like that. Like I've done like okay in college. I'm not a straight A student by any chance. Um, 
I did make the Dean's List last semester, which I was freaking ecstatic about. I did really, really well last semester. But if there's any time like a class or something like where I don't understand, I have to work hard. I cannot just like take notes, never look at them, and ace a test. I cannot imagine being able to do that because I am a very much a visual person and repetition really helps me so like with Spanish and whatnot I really had to like buckle down and learn because it didn't come naturally to me same thing I took human bio my sophomore year of high school and I remember being like oh crap I have to take this but I'm not good at science, but I had to fulfill it for a credit. And so I buckled down. I studied regularly. I did everything that I could. I did every extra credit opportunity and I finished with a B plus. Was I sad that I made a B plus? No, I was freaking happy because that was my best work that I had ever put in. And understanding that your best work is not always an A is a big pill to swallow and it's a hard pill to swallow whenever you're in college so I think that I like am not stupid by any means but I think that I um I can be smart like I am smart about some things like I know a crap ton about makeup I any like YouTube stuff I'm pretty knowledgeable on like actual videos I'm very very knowledgeable on like product um, like as far as like makeup goes, I love learning about that kind of stuff and I don't know, like I definitely feel like I'm smart on some things, but nobody is smart at everything if that makes any sense. So everybody has their little niche and the thing that they love to learn about. So yeah, I would say I'm smart in some things, but not in everything like math. <sighs> Girl, I was happy that I made a C plus in statistics and that's fine because I freaking suck at math and I went to tutoring fairly often. I did everything that I could and that was my best work and I was fine that a C plus was my best work. If, if like if you're crying about a C plus and you worked your ass off, oh I, I can't say that. <laughs> Dang it, I'm sorry. Anyways, if you work your butt off, um, there's nothing wrong with being happy about a grade that's not top-notch. You know what I mean? The next assumption, Madison. Madison and Sarah are your favorite people. Yes, I love them very, very much. Those are my best friends, Madison and Sarah. Please go follow their Instagram. You're welcome, hoes. But yes, I love them very, very much. I am very thankful that college and high school have brought me closer to them. And yeah, I couldn't do my life without them. I love them very, very much. So yes, they're my favorite. We love them so much oh this one's kind of this one's like kind of like tea hello but this one says you are not the type of person to want to get married young um I'm gonna be honest if I like could get married young I probably would if that makes any sense like I wouldn't want to get married at 20 like if I got married yes like tomorrow I would be like okay this is like a whole freaking realm because I try to think of this topic in the most logical sense possible because everybody has their own thing that is best for them. For me personally, I don't think it would be smart at all to get married right now. I'm literally 20 years old. I'm about to turn 21. Oh my gosh, I turned 21 in a month. Uh, it's fine. I'm so excited. But anyways, if I got freaking married right now, I have a job that I work one day a week I am a full-time student and I live at college like how am I gonna be able to afford anything unless if my significant other has a full-time job but still like I think the biggest thing to think about whenever you're getting married is like stupid as it is is finances because money is so hard to deal with and if you do not have the money to pay your bills to pay rent to pay off any loans any credit card debt your house your car you are going to be the most miserable couple in the entire world if you guys are constantly bickering about we don't have enough money to do this we don't have enough money to do this we can barely afford our rent we can't go out to eat because we're so freaking broke like that is the most miserable place that you can be in and having so much hatred towards that person over money is like 
it's freaking ridiculous. So I don't think that there's anything wrong with getting married young. I don't know what categorizes young. I feel like I would like to get married by like 25. I feel like that's a good number. But if it happened like at like 23, there's nothing wrong with that. I feel like 23 to 25 is like a good number to get married. I don't know. That's just like what I think for me though. Um, there's nothing wrong with getting married, but just make sure that you are doing it in a very, very smart manner that you guys have thought through this. You guys have talked about money. I know I'm talking so much about money whenever it revolves to marriage, but you are going to be married to that person for the rest of your life. You guys are gonna have jobs. You guys are gonna have kids one day. You're gonna buy a house together. You're probably gonna buy a vehicle together. And all those things involve money. And that is a big deal. And if you guys can't, if you guys can't afford the bare essentials, and just because you can afford the bare essentials does not mean that you're gonna have a great marriage. Just because you're a freaking millionaire does not mean that you're not gonna struggle with money. Money is a very dirty thing and people do awful things for money. So I don't know. I feel like thinking that you're ready to get married is also really important. Like you need to feel emotionally ready to get married because if it's just like, I, f I just said yes, because like I've, I would like never say no, but I'm also scared. Like don't feel pressured to say yes, just because somebody asked you to freaking marry them. Like if you're not ready and if it's not your time, say no. That doesn't mean to, will I ever marry you ever? That means right now, I, I can't, I don't want to marry at the moment. I don't know if that makes any sense. But yeah, I feel very passionate about this because like some people like get married right after high school and if you are financially able to, if you guys are in a good place with your relationship and the relationship is healthy and happy, there's nothing wrong with that. If you can make it work, I freaking applaud you. If you want to wait till you're freaking 40 to get married, I freaking applaud you because you guys are going to be like like you're the smartest and you guys have experienced so many different things there's nothing wrong with getting married young is all i'm trying to say but if you do it be very smart financially and just be in the best place that you can be i'm sorry i'm getting so passionate about all these answers but i feel like these are all so important and like if somebody were to listen to them i feel like it would be helpful so that is the answer to that one. I feel like I'm popping off, I'm sorry. This one is you are a makeup snob. I don't know if a snob, I don't know how to classify like what a makeup snob is. I guess it's like if you're very educated on makeup or if you have a good bit of makeup. I do have like a fair amount of makeup, yes. I do have, I do collect it. I'm not just like, not using it if that makes any sense or I'm not just buying it just because I feel like I want to buy it it's because it's a collection of mine it's something that I really really love um but I feel like I'm pretty knowledgeable on product as well like I would definitely love working in like an Ulta or something like that like in my phase now I don't I just don't live near one but I feel like that would be really really fun because I love helping people um like if they have a question or something like that and if I know them like if I know what they're like asking I love like educating people on makeup I feel like it's really really fun so I guess yes I don't know exactly what classifies as a makeup snob but I would say probably yeah okay this is the last one this is so sweet there's like multiple different parts Sweetest person ever, random AF, but loves sweet tea. That's the first question. And then doesn't like rap music, question mark. Um, I freaking love sweet tea. Sweet tea is everything. I love it so much. I try not to drink it a ton because it's very sugary and it's not the best thing for you. But I freaking love sweet tea. I'm from the South. I'm from North Carolina. If you can't tell A by my accent. Um, yeah, I freaking love sweet tea. Sweet tea is freaking fire. If I don't get a Coke or water, I'm definitely drinking sweet tea. So there's that. And then doesn't like rap music. That is extremely false. I love Post Malone. Hi. We love so much. I love Drake. I love who else? I like Chance the Rapper. Drake Lamar. I like... Who else do I like that's rap? Da Baby. I, I feel like I can't say that right. Da Baby. I guess I love him. I've said Post Malone a million times. Duh. Sway Lee's pretty good. I don't know a ton of his music, 
but I really like him as well. Travis Scott, yep, yeah, he's a good one too. I like Jay-Z pretty good. Does Beyonce count as a rapper? If she does, then Beyonce, duh, because queen. Okay, the Carters album, like where it's Beyonce and Jay-Z, that is like one of the best albums that have ever came out and I still listen to it to this day. It is very much a like summer vibing, but yeah, I love all of those. I'm trying to think of another rapper because I feel like I'm leaving one out. Megan Thee Stallion, what am I doing with my life? Duh, and then I always have a soft spot for Nicki Minaj, like hello middle school, like how are you, you know? But I think that's all the rappers that I like that I can think of, so. Yeah, that is it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm sorry that this was like a very rambly assumptions about me video, but I really hope that you guys enjoy. And once again, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel down below. And please leave any video requests that you guys have in the comments down below. And thank you guys so much for watching and have a great rest of your day. Bye. <music>